Hello and welcome again, guys, to G Squared Academy, where you know excellence is epitomized. Thank you, guys, for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the engagement, which you have um, been doing with the channel. So here at G Squared, we like to simplify things. And one of the things that people have been having trouble with um, are one, a few of the things, limitations, sources of errors, and assumptions. So today, I just wanted to share with you guys um, this video about how you can decipher what these things are. All right. So without further ado, let us proceed. So um, here's the context. You have a lab to write or you have written up a lab, usually a planning and designing lab. And um, now you need to write your limitation sources of errors and your assumptions. So where do I get these things from? That's where you're asking yourself. How do I find these things? And, and you know, how am I going to get that information? So that's what you're thinking about. Okay, so what are limitations? That's the first thing we want to look at. So limitations really are uncontrollable variables. The, and of course, variables are things which affect your experiment, right? But these are the ones which you really cannot control um, to some extent. There's nothing you can do about them, but they will still affect your experiment. So where can we find these things which are uncontrollable? You can find these things in, their, in, in your instruments. You can have faulty electronics in your instrument, which you don't know anything about. So because you don't know about it, you can't fix the problem. It therefore becomes a limitation. Um, in your materials, materials have certain purity, especially in chemistry when we're looking at um, certain um, titrations, when you need high purity substances or you're doing other reactions where it needs to be high purity. You really can't change the purity of your substance. Um, it will be to some degree impure. And so therefore that becomes a limiting um, reach or limiting factor in your situation. Then there are intrinsic things, things with yourself. For example, I am colorblind. So, you know, that may affect my, um, my chemistry when I'm looking at colors and those sort of things. Reaction time is another thing. Yes, you can work on your reaction time over time um, by doing games and by doing things. But for the most part, in that given setting, your reaction time is set, so to speak. With practice, it becomes better. Um, but I mean, if it is that is a one-off situation, then your reaction time may affect you. And you really can't do anything about that at that point in time. If, for example, someone has asthma um, or some other respiratory ailment, um, and they're doing a respiratory lab where you're checking breathing rate and those things, they're definitely limited by that. You can't say, okay, you know what? Don't have asthma tomorrow because we're going to be doing a respiratory lab. And so therefore, that's going to limit it. No, it doesn't really work like that. And so therefore, those sort of intrinsic things um, will affect or limit your experiment. Then there are environmental things, you know. Um, humidity could be something that would affect your experiment or the presence of dust particles in the air, or some other thing, something that is environmental, which is going to be affecting your experiment. So here are four places you can actually find the things which may affect your experiment in terms of limitations. So when you're doing your experiment, you need to look, um, is there something that could be wrong with the instrument? Is there something with the materials that could be an issue? Is there something that is with me that could be an issue that's limiting the results I'm getting here, or is there something in the environment, all right? And then now we can press on to our sources of errors. So what are sources of errors? Um, to say, first of all, in some jurisdictions, we consider sources of errors limitations. Um, it's a bit touchy, touchy issue because sources of errors, um, they do cause you to get bad results, so to speak, or not what you're expecting. So they may affect the accuracy or the precision of your experiment, really. And, um, and some people may consider them limitations, but there's a slight difference. The fact that you, to some extent, you may 
have some impact in terms of control of these things. So you can actually do something about your sources of errors to some extent. So there are controllable variables which do affect your experiment. So as I said, there is some degree of control, but some people will consider them, <clears throat> excuse me, some people will consider them to be limitations, right? So where do we get these things from? Really, you can look at these coming from three main sources. There are other things you can look at, but let's just consider these three main sources in this video. Your instrument again. Remember, in the first with the limitations, we did look at instruments, instrumentation. But here you have in your instrument, you have things like faulty calibration, um, not not uh, the best test conditions for the instrument. So you are working with an instrument and it's not under the best test conditions, right? And it's not the best conditions for use. In other words, that it needs to be fixed in some way so that it can operate optimally. Okay, so there, there you have. And those things, as I said, you can actually tweak those things if you were to calibrate properly or if you were to use the instrument under the best conditions, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you have those things. Then you have your method. What is wrong with the methodology that I'm using to solve this problem? You know, is it a non-ideal chemical or physical behavior, meaning that your your chemicals, they may decay, they, it may be a slow reaction, they may not dissolve, um, the reacting species may react with other things, you know what I'm saying? Um, and another one would be your endpoint error in titrations, where, of course, you really can't do anything about that. So that's kind of like a limitation, because for a colorimetric titration, you must get a color change to indicate the end of the titration. But that color change comes after you have added more than the equivalent amount, stoichiometric amount, stoichiometric amounts of um, your reactants or your titrant. So really, that can be considered a limitation, but yet it is a source of error. So these are the things that we're talking about. You know, your method, in terms of your method, um, is it reacting with something else? Is it a slow reaction, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have personal um, situations or personal errors then. No, I've always said that your sources of error should not be an indictment to you as an experimenter. It shouldn't be something that um, you're writing that, you know, you're being a bad scientist, really, to, to, to put it um, bluntly, you're being a bad scientist, so to speak. But in the context of making, um, let's just say, careless errors. Um, so personal errors, really carelessness, inattention, or um, limitation. So your parallax, students like to put that um, in their thing where they're not reading at eye level. For example, color blindness could be a personal thing here, but which you really can't change seriously, but um, which would also be a limitation. But then your personal things, inattention, those sort of things you should not be putting at higher level as a scientist. You, why didn't you read the thing at eye level? Or why didn't you... Um, you know, put the thing on a flat surface to read the measuring cylinder, for example, or why didn't you do these things which you know may cause errors? So therefore, these are things which you should be able to fix, so to speak, which is why they are sources of errors really and not limitations. Okay, so I, I'm trusting you guys are getting this bit so far. So now we proceed. Assumptions, right? Um, what are your assumptions, really? Your assumptions are control variables. Now, when you're looking at an experiment, you're thinking to yourself, there are some things, and this might sound weird, there are some things that you, you think they are in a certain state or a certain condition, right, for your experiment to proceed. When you're doing an experiment, you're usually trying to, and if you are doing the thing properly, um, systematic, really, you are really looking at one variable and how that one variable affects one other variable. If you try to do too many things, of course, if you try to do two things, two things, then you're going to end up with problems because you're not sure in what is causing what. And so that is why you do one thing. How is it that I'm changing the temperature and how it affects the rate of the reaction? If you change temperature and concentration, you're not going to know which one is affecting the rate of the reaction in a certain way. So you need to change one at a time. So you have the two things which you're looking at cause and effect. Then all other variables, and variables, of course, are things which affect your experiment. All other variables must be kept constant, 
right? Or must be controlled, really. So all these other variables, you're, you're assuming that they are not changing. So if you are looking at the effect of concentration on the rate of reaction, you're going to assume um, or you're going to try your best to keep the temperature constant. And you're going to, in, in, in essence, assume that the temperature is constant. You're going to assume that the surface area of the species are not changing. You're going to assume that there's no catalyst somewhere um, that is affecting your experiment. You know, So you're assuming that these things are the case. So basically, these are controlled variables. You need to have controlled these things. And so therefore, they become assumptions. OK? Um, you must measure the effect of one variable on another. And we just went through all of that stuff and all other variables must be cons constant or you, must, you assume that those variables um, you keep constant. They are in the state that you assume they are in. So your assumption and your limitation cannot be the same thing um, in the experiment. So if you assume that, um, or if a limitation is temperature, then it can't be an assumption because it's already limiting it, which suggests that it is actually changing in some aspect. And so therefore, the reason if it was constant, it may not be affecting it or because it's constant. But because it's changing, then you know for sure that it can't be uh, an assumption because assumption is supposed to be controlled. All right. So there you have it, guys and how you determine your assumptions. Just remember that they are controlled variables. And thank you guys for watching. I trust that these videos will be helpful to you in writing up your labs. I know that getting limitations and sources of errors assumptions are difficult things um, in experiments, but I'm hoping that this will help you and that you will do well in your labs. Thank you guys for watching. And just to note that we will be doing some lives soon. So watch out for those live sessions um, where we'll be going through some difficult content for you guys. So watch out for those upcoming live sessions. And thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, G Squared Academy, where you know excellence is, as usual, epitomized. All the best.